Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and today, um, yeah, I don't have a countdown video for you uh, because I haven't finished any of the books on the last of the countdown for this week. Uh, so what I thought I'd do instead uh, today is actually give you uh, kind of a fun thing that I've seen going around on booktube, which is to have Goodreads or look at Goodreads and see what books Goodreads thinks are the best books that I have read. Now when I did this in in general and just looked at it um, there was a very high uh, percentage of books that ended up being kind of of the same genre and category and so I really in looking at that wasn't super happy with that particular part of the list there are four books right at the top for um, you know, some smaller published authors which you know, kind of wasn't really what I was necessarily looking for. And then there is a very high percentage of romance. <laughs> and so I thought how I would twist this around for me is to really, um, is to really go through it from the thousand and one book list that I've been reading from and kind of look at the books that Goodreads says are the best books off of this list. And then next week, what I will do is give you my top reads of 2021 for both books on the thousand and one list and not on the thousand and one list. So you can kind of get a good comparison almost of the two. But um, out of the thousand and one books, uh, I've mentioned a couple of times that the the list actually has 1,315 or so books on it. Um, my Goodreads list only have 1,307 and I can't figure out what eight I'm missing. I'm hoping somewhere later I'll be able to figure it out. And I have officially read 312, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so I'm gonna go through Goodreads. I have it here on my phone just because it's easier for me, but I will put up a screenshot or something of the actual book on Goodreads uh, so you can also see it uh, as I go through it. And some of these books I read quite a while ago and some more recently, so we'll go through all of them. But I'm just going to go do 10 because that seems to be kind of the theme when you do this kind of video. Uh, but the first book uh, is actually... I actually own this book, um, which is A Ballad for George Hennig by Victor Paskov. And this book, according to my lovely little phone here, is rated 4.63 and has 2,386 ratings, ratings, which is actually fairly small. Uh, I ended up giving this book just around the three and a half star mark, if I remember correctly. Um, you know, it follows an elderly violinist, uh, violin maker, and kind of his interactions with the family. I I don't know why it has such a high rating. It's the, actually the highest rated book out of all of the books on the list, according to Goodreads. And the problem that I have, well, not the problem, but what I think this is, is that this author is beloved in their country. And with that few of ratings, it just brought it up so high in the overall totals. Um, but that is the the first one, the top one, um, A Ballad for George Hennig. The second one, I do not own a physical copy of, and that's bad because the book is actually Lord of the Rings and the full trilogy. I can't believe I don't actually own a copy of Lord of the Rings. The copy that I read was a digital version. Um, I, at the time, that's a, more of what I was reading, and I didn't have my booktube channel yet. And I, it is, has a rating of 4.5 with 610,000, the version of the book that I'm looking at on Goodreads. And I, of course, gave it, if you can see that, five stars. Um, it is one of my favorite reads off of the list in total. I read this, it says, when did I read this? I read this in December of 2020, so before I started my channel, and I really, really loved that book. I think it was something that having seen the movies and then getting to compare the books to it, uh, it you know, it's a classic for a reason, and it's beloved for a reason, and it definitely was an absolute amazing read, um, and well worth this, I think it should be maybe in the first plot of the ones I've read so far, um, but yeah, definitely up there. And so the third book on the list is actually Martin Eden by Jack London, and this has a rating of 4.46 uh, with 31,141 ratings at the time I'm filming this. And this book, I actually gave it, I believe, four and a half stars. Um, if I look at on Goodreads, it says four. 
it says four on Goodreads, but because you can't do half stars on Goodreads. Uh, this book follows a character whose name is Martin Eden, and uh, I loved this book so much when I read it this year. Uh, I did read it as part of the countdown, and it is one of those books that I read in two days, even though it was over a 500 page book, I could not put it down, and I was so mad about the ending. Uh, and it was one of those endings that you go, it was really impactful what happened, but I was so mad because I really was hoping for a different ending for um, the characters in the book. But Martin Eden is the third book on the list. The fourth book I actually own, which is The Book of Disquiet by Fernanda Pessoa. This is rated 4.43 stars with 23,855 ratings uh, and it I rated it about a three and a half star. There is some amazing writing in this book. It is one of those books that it felt like um, I said at the time that when I read it this year I felt like Pessoa took his head out and just let everything fall out uh, and it is absolutely that. It is truly beautiful. It just got long for me uh, which is why I ended up kind of giving it a little bit lower than what the Goodreads average had on it. It is absolutely a book worth your time though if you like that kind of prose because it is very beautiful. There's not really much of a story or a plot. It just feels like a whole bunch of notes compiled together which isn't often. Maybe that's also why I have a little bit of a lower rating for it because it's not always my kind of book but Book of Disquiet. This is one that I did read this year. My phone closed. Uh, the next one is kind of an interesting one. Um, it's Watchmen by Alan Moore. And this is more almost of, I believe, a graphic novel. This has a rating of 4.37 and it has 513,539. Um, this book is one that I read a number of years ago and I just, it was not my kind of book. I'm not a huge graphic novel person. I ended up not giving it a rating at all, if you can see that on there. Um, and I also don't have the dates that I read it because it, it was that long ago that I read it. But that is the next book on the list, which I forgot what number I'm on. One, two, three, four, five, that was five. Um, so number six, is The Godfather by Mario Puzo. And this book is rated 4.36 stars with 371,000 ratings on it. I gave it five stars on my rating. Um, if you can close the little ad there, five stars on my rating. This book was absolutely magnificent, especially compared to the movie. Um, you want to talk great book to movie adaptations, this is one of them. But there is enough in the book that's different than the movie that there's still a lot of value in reading this book. It is absolutely amazing as far as just... Um, learning about the Corleone family uh, through the writing. It's absolutely, absolutely worth the time. It absolutely deserves, I don't know why I'm saying absolutely so much. Uh, it deserves its high rating that it has on Goodreads. Uh, the next book is actually called Schindler's List in Here by Thomas Kennelly, and it is rated 4.31 stars and has 156,638 ratings. Uh, this is originally was called Schindler's Ark, which is how the book that I actually ended up reading. Um, and it's one of those two from a book to kind of movie adaptation. The movie adaptation is so uh, popular that the book just kind of felt a little bit supplemental to it. Uh, I mean, not it felt weird to say it's supplemental because the movie was obviously based off of the book, uh, but the book was okay. I ended up, again, not giving it a rating. I says I finished the book on June 8th, 2019. So a few years ago is when I read that particular book. Um, but I, again, I still, the movie resonated more with me than the book did. Uh, the next one is The Little Prince by Antoine de saint ex Perry Exupery, butchering that name, and I know I am, so I apologize. Um, the Little Prince has a fairly iconic kind of cover on it, and I'll put a book up here for you as well. It has a rating of 4.31 with 1.625 million ratings, so it definitely has a lot of ratings on it. It says I finished this book in January of 2019, so close to three years ago now, and 
I don't remember a huge amount ba about it other than it was really short and it was a really easy read, but it wasn't one that really stuck with me. And I don't know if it's because the genre is not for me, if it was more geared towards younger readers and that's why it wasn't for me. Um, but again, I didn't give it a rating. So when I first started using Goodreads, I wasn't rating things all the time. Uh, and even now I'm inconsistently rating things depending on what I'm reading and who I'm reading it with. Uh, but this particular one, I did not rate. But The Little Prince. And then the ninth book is Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimanda Ngozi Adichie. Again, I'm butchering that name. I'm so sorry. Uh, this has a 4.3 rating and 129, a 4.3, yeah, star rating and 129,836 actual ratings. And uh, it, I read it in March of 2019 and I gave it four stars at the time, but I didn't write a review. And I am very, very sad to say, I don't remember it. Um, it's frustrating when I have a book that I've rated so highly uh, that I don't have any notes on and don't remember. That's one good thing about the Thousand and One Book Countdown. I have such a great, um, a great chronicle, a great history of everything I'm reading now. Uh, so when I don't remember why I gave it that rating later on, maybe I can go watch the video and figure out why. But Half of a Yellow Sun. And then the very last one is probably the most controversial on the list of 10, and that is Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. Um, it has a rating of 4.3 stars, 1.1 million ratings on it, and 21,000 reviews. I don't have a date that I read this, so it was pre-Goodreads. I had given it five stars, as you can see on here. And uh, I had talked about this in uh, my 26 random questions tag, book palette tag. I don't remember which tag it was now. I think it was maybe the book palette tag. Um, but this particular book is one that I read quite a, quite early in my kind of reading as an adult. And I loved this book at the time I read it. I thought the story was really fascinating. I remember watching Gone with the Wind movie uh, and one how long that is, but the iconic characters of Scarlett O'Hara and Rhett Butler and just that romantic kind Kind of atmosphere. As I have grown as a reader, I really want to go back and reread this and see if I still feel the same way about it. Uh, but it is book number 10 on the list of what Goodreads feels like it are the top 10 books that I have read so far according to their star rating. Um, and you know, I'm about mixed in there as far as which ones I think were really good uh, with things like The Godfather and Lord of the Rings and then mm, okay on a couple of other ones. So kind of a fun one, but but hopefully in the next week or so, I will do a video about the books that I have read this year that I think are my top picks um, and see what you think of those. But for now, that's all I have for what I'm reading right now. What am I reading right now? For my weekly update, I have... Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. And as you can see from the bookmark, I am a good halfway through this. I am reading this with Heidi from My Reading Life. And this book is weird, <laughs> but it's also one that's grabbing my attention quite quite a bit. I hope it continues um, to grab my attention towards the end. But this one is on the 1001 book list, but not the 2021 list. But I have almost halfway through that particular book. And then I have The Golden Ass, um, which is on the 2021 list. And there is a bookmark in here because I have started it and started this translation of it and comparing it to kind of that more modern translation has been an interesting experience. Uh, but yeah, I have started this one. And then I have Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. And as you can see here, oops, I am a good two thirds of the way through it. We had our second, I'm redoing this as a buddy read with Elle Thinks. And we had our second check-in today. Uh, so I'm waiting to hear back from her about that, but I should finish this one sometime next week. Oh, it's not on the 1001 book countdown, of course. And then the other book that I have a bookmark in, but really haven't started is A Tale of Love and Darkness by Amos Oz. This bookmark is in here on page one. <laughs> so the bookmark's not really, not really a bookmark. It's just holding it for when I'm ready to start this particular book. Um, but yeah, A Tale of Love and Darkness by Amos Oz will be uh, hopefully the next one. Um, and then maybe next week I'll have my 
another countdown video for you and hopefully get below three. But for today, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, and for my very special friends out there, love you. Bye.